Hello students, welcome to video number 5 for the C++ program grading a true-false quiz. Incidentally, I forgot to mention early on that when an array, when number of arrays relate to each other, like here there are three arrays, a question array, answer key array, and user response array. When they relate to each other in a way that all the values in the first cell of each of the related array form like one record. So like this is the question, this is the answer key, this is the response. That's like one record and in the cell number two which is index one this is the question this is the answer this is the response so when arrays are related in that manner they are called parallel arrays and uh, before more advanced structures like structure classes were available like in fortran parallel arrays were used quite often they're a little hard to maintain so eventually they fell out of the favor but they were used quite extensively, extensively for a while. Uh, so when arrays members, each member of the array relates to the same script member in the next array and next array, then all these such related array are called parallel arrays. Okay. <clears throat> so by now we have filled the questions array answer key array and user response array. Now we want to grade the response array. We really want to grade the student's response or user's response and actually compute a grade for them. So let's go to Xcode and see what function uh, does that. So the grade responses function takes the answer key array and user response array and both are passed as a const because we don't want to change either one of them inside this function even accidentally so that's why they're passed as const and for this length is the logical length of the field element in both arrays that we are interested in grading so graded responses function compares the answer key and response key arrays and returns the correct number of responses by return mechanism function also takes len as an argument, the logical length of both arrays. So code for this is actually very simple. Uh, we are supposed to see that how many answers match correctly with the response that user has given. So for that we run a for loop i equal to zero i less than len I plus plus and it's really very simple if in an array element I at index I if the value is same in answer and response array that means that answer that question was answered correctly and we increase the score by one remember it was set to zero otherwise we just advance to the next one so we don't record the wrong answers we just record the correct answers. For correct answers, in the same array uh, element i, both answers array and response array will store the same value. And once this for loop is finished, I return the score value. And just as an example, if you go back to our Microsoft Word document, let's say user answers one to the earth is flat and also one to the set uh, question that moon is a satellite of earth uh, and answer to third one like water freezes at zero degree Fahrenheit will be actually false because it freezes at 32 degree Fahrenheit but user answers that actually wrong he said yes it does so 
when we compare these three uh, elements in the answer array and the response array, so there's no match here, so user get no points here. There's a match here, so user get one point here. There's no match here, so user gets no point here. So after grading the three responses, user score will be one. Okay, so that's actually clear from here as well as from the uh, function grade responses. Okay, once we have graded the responses and returned the score uh, by the user, then next order business is that we want to give the feedback to the user, and that's done by this function called print answers and responses. So we want to print, actually we want to print all the questions, all the correct answers, and all the answers that were provided by the user. Okay? So that they have complete feedback on what question was, one correct answer was, one, what they answered. Okay? We'll discuss that next. So print answers and responses function prints the questions, correct answer to each question, and user response to the question, all three, so that user can get a complete feedback. In order to do that, this function takes all three arrays as well as their logical length as arguments. So remember I talked about parallel arrays, really the parallel array property of these three arrays are manifesting the best in this function where all three are being used simultaneously. Okay? So, and in that case, since we don't want to change any of the arrays, so questions array, answer key or answer array, and the response array, all three are passed as a const reference. Okay? And the logical length because no matter what the physical length was, number of questions, number of answer keys, and number of response will be same. So that's the length we have here. Okay, so that's the code for the function here. We do some header thing. We kind of tell them, here are the correct answers and your responses. And this is set bool alpha. What it, this does, if a zero or one was stored in a boolean variable which will be actually this array here it will actually print instead of zero and one it will print true or false so basically it converts integers to boolean alphabetical values a b c okay uh, set w55 means print next item which is a little bit later will be a question left aligned in 55 uh, column width set fill means fill the empty space with this and there's another program we have, where we have described laying out of this table we won't actually go through that right now but basically this is the header line that will be at the top of the responses you saw that earlier how that comes out in the very first video when we run this program. But the key part of this function is this loop here. It runs from zero to less than the len, length of the logical length of the three arrays, plus plus. And first I print the question for, uh, stored in the first element of questions array i equal to zero then i print the answer key for that and finally i print the response by the user that was given by them okay and let's see yeah we'll see the output soon so we'll see how that works and all the set w left set fill set w left set fill set w again all they're doing just formatting so that your whole uh, output will look like a table 
and we have fairly long program to describe all those things you were given a copy of that all right so that's how the print answers and responses uh, function works we're going to ask you one very simple question so you can think a little bit more depth about this function print uh, answers and responses which takes three parallel arrays and a logical length as an argument the question is this can three arrays the questions array this guy over here answer array this guy over here response array this guy over here can three of them have different capacities of course all must exceed the logical length len that is passed to the function can actual capacities of these th three arrays condition to the fact that it should exceed that can those capacities be all different values okay think about that and be ready to explain why you thought that uh, not to say that that would be an ideal situation but can that be done all right okay we're gonna add uh, finish this video a little bit early we still have them to discuss the main function but it's uh, it's about 30 lines of code so it deserves its own video uh, video number six so we will discuss that separately in video number six okay see you in the next video on C++ program to grade a true-false quiz. Thank you.